But I want us to see how unity can bring us victory. So I'll be talking about unity, power of unity. I remember uh, we are trusting God for higher dimensions. And I want to say this that it is the leaders or the people who are determined to see things changing who make it possible for things to happen. People in their leadership. And I said that we need to consider ourselves not just as followers, but as believers who will change things in our own lives, in our families, and here in church. Unity is one of the factors that anybody who wants to mold habits, anybody who wants to transform people in a certain way, is one of the things, unity, that you must decide to walk in. Hallelujah. And there are so many benefits of unity. Unity is very important. In the book of Psalms, chapter 1, that's 3 and verses 1, we see the psalmist describing benefits of unity. And he says that how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. So, on the contrary, how evil it is, and instead of pleasant, what is the opposite of pleasant? What is the opposite of pleasant? If something is not pleasing, what is it doing? Yeah? Sorry? Hurting. Disgusting. How evil and disgusting it is when brothers live separated, scattered. They cannot work together, they cannot work together. And that is why anything that people try to establish outside unity, unless you want them to do it alone, they cannot succeed. So the psalmist is bringing out the power of unity as something that is so good and pleasant not when people know it but when people practice it hallelujah it says when brothers live living is an action it is a doing what it is not just information. It is doing something. Praise the Lord. So unity is doing. So there is no unity in imagination. Unity is when you do it. The church is very scattered. Believers are very scattered. If there is a challenge that you have in the world today, in the church, is about unity. Unity is not easy, but unity is possible. Hallelujah. So, if we have to be men and women of impact, as a church, as God's people, unity is inevitable and not just unity because we are here unity even in your own family in your own home 
The problem we have why things are not changing is because we think being a believer it is when you are in the church on Sunday. Christianity is not a function of Sunday or a function of a service in the middle of the week. It is not when you are together singing and praising. That is not when we are Christians or when we are believers. And please, this is something that we must break. Because it's like most of us are built around this concept that it is in church where I should look righteous, where I should look holy, where I should look like somebody who believes in God. It is on Sunday. It is in the service. It is during the fellowship. So, the Christian outside church setup is an upset Christian. There is no believer outside the church. And because that is what we are practicing, most of us, we end up not impacting ourselves and impacting the world. I don't like giving this example, but allow me to give it. A Muslim will never hide his identity. He will show that he's a Muslim, including by the way you dress. And he doesn't care. Adam, you could have come to the house. He said, Muslim, I'm afraid. I'm going to walk out of the house. I'm going to walk out of the house. You did not come dressed officially. Kwa sababu ni musimamu walitangasa kitango Na wakawanesha hatu matuki Iko hivyo Na kama hamuta kubali hile hiko We are not ready to get involved <laughs> Na ajari Ata kikuja hapa Kwa mimi mai kwanza atasema Wasalam araiku Ndiyo asema ya kona yesu wa sikiwe Ile ya kukenje what I was saying is this. These people are so united. They are so united. They are seriously United. And that is why they make it. So, if we are going to have influence, the church must have people who believe in unity. The head of state is a symbol of unity in Kenya. And that is why it's a very uh, challenging position to be a president. Because you need to to make sure that every tribe will feel wanted, accommodated, will feel uh, like they are part of the Kenyan community. Every religion. The man of the world, the man of the community, the man of the world, 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 the man of Lakini ya kariyama ni kama na njeli Presidentu wa mekua muislamu Ama zi hiti zikwa muislamu Au tawamu wa kifana hizo mituku Wa munajua mbulita kwa muislamu Na munajua musima mwetu kama wa islamu Kama nini kuna wakikuyu ya kuketishwa kwa jomwa And then muketi Sisi dini yangu Imani yangu wa hini uhusu Lakini kwa hini wanafikia imani ya ukristo ni flexible Sino wanaka wanaonekana kama Hamu ukristo ni kama ukristo ni flexible Na hiyo kuwa flexible, siyo hile flexible ya jia mzuri Ni kwa mba mkristo anaweza No Unity is very important Hallelujah And the Bible says that One thing that comes when there is unity It is likened to precious oil It is likened to precious oil Something that is precious That is Psalms 1, that 3 verses 1 it is like precious oil that is poured on the hand. Now, this precious oil 
There is mention here that is point on the hand running down on the beard running down on Aaron's beard. Aaron was a priest. Uh, was a high priest to the fallen and all that. Uh, it is like it is the oil that makes people to maintain relevance in the kingdom of God and in his presence. It is an ordination. An ordination that causes people to maintain relevance in the kingdom of God and in his presence. Hallelujah. So unity brings a lot of relevance in the eyes of God. Romans 16, verses 17. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division. Can you see? Watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. Now, you see, even Paul is teaching the church in Rome that they should be very careful with anyone who brings disunity, who brings division. Therefore, if a church has to stand strong, we need to have people who believe in unity. If you read King James Version, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Hallelujah. How do you deal with the people who bring divisions? How do you deal with them according to the Bible? How do you deal with the people who cause divisions? Avoid them. That is what Paul is saying. Avoid them. So avoiding them meaning you don't side with the people who are causing divisions in the church. Who are causing divisions among us brethren. People who divide you. If it's a cult that is coming in between the faith that you believe. And it is causing you to disconnect from the church of Jesus Christ. The people, the believers then avoid it. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Avoid it. Avoid it. There are people who recruit others to become rebellious in church. And that is why we need believers who are mature to know how to handle and manage such crises. By making sure that those who cause division and those who offend, contrary to the doctrine of Jesus, contrary to the teaching of the Bible, they should be avoided. Praise the Lord. They should be avoided. When you were, you were starting the, the church, when it was very young, I, I think we've given this testimony many times. There are people who used to cause divisions. Unapata, kuna leaders wako kanisa lakini wako na kuna group wana influence in their own way in the church. So mchungaji akiwa hapa, wana fikiri wana umiria kila mtu. Lakini, kuna mikuti. Those divisions cannot bring the glory of God in the church. We need to have people in the ministry who believe in the culture of unity. Hallelujah. Sasa, Wengine tu wanajaribu to divide na mke wangu. Imagine mtu tena anakuja kuniambia kama kuniambia ambia mke wako anamwambia watoto mdogo wako wamekatikiwa sana. Sasa hivi ambie hata ni kweli mekatikiwa kuliko watoto. So, wewe unanionyesha je, ndio anaona vizuri sana shida kwangu kuliko Mhm. Eh, ndio anajua kwangu vizuri kuliko wale wako huko ndani. So, you know, as a father, I'm to ask you, I think my wife is very responsible. I don't want to 
watoto wa kaume katikiwa hata wao sio bila walikuwa smart ndio wapi hivyo tumeanza kidogo tu but they were causing divisions unity is important in the ministry and when we have people in church who are not led to be spread either by a bad doctrine or by an evil intruder that ministry can go far including your own faith can go far your family can go far hallelujah don't allow division divisions don't allow offenses you may be working with people who are full of offense eh? an offended sister an offended brother an offended leader an offended believer God can send people here who have been offended elsewhere in a, in a certain church. And when they come here, they don't believe like there is any difference. So when they come here, they carry the same spirit. What should people who God has helped do, who understand better what to do, do what should they do at that time? They need to stand up and decide to practice and exercise unity. Hallelujah. Haven't you seen the politicians, how they are doing it? How they combine together? They form alliances together. Because together you conquer. Divided, you lose. That is the principle of winning. Unity is a principle of winning. United, you have the victory. Scattered, no victory. If at Christ's intervention ministry, we can just decide from our hearts that this ministry will be one of the symbols of how a united church of God fearing people can look like. I want to tell you, as the Bible says in Psalms 1, the verse is 1, and that is where God commands a blessing. Blessings shall be commanded in this church in a mighty way. Unity attracts blessings that are commanded by God. Blessings come in many ways. There are blessings that come because you labor for them. For instance, you've worked, you've been paid. A salary is a blessing. There are blessings that come because of favor. You've just received favor and you've just been blessed from nowhere. Favor brings blessings. There are blessings that come because you deserve them. You've not worked for anything. For instance, inheritance from your parents. Or maybe a brother sees you in trouble or a sister and they decide to help you. That is a blessing. So, it comes because of your relationship with the person. There are blessings that are not going to come to you. It can only take God for them to appear. And those are the blessings that are found in Psalms 1, that the verse is 1, where, and 2, where uh, the Bible talks about, and there God commands blessing. Commanded blessings. Blessings that were not supposed to come, that they only take the intervention of God. They come because of the presence of unity. So, where people are united, not only physically, but their spirits are connected to each other. That you not want to see a bad thing happening to evangelists because he's part of you. He's one of our brothers in the kingdom. 
His problem affects me. That you don't want to see uh, that teacher Khan is going through this issue and you remain comfortable. You just feel, yes, I may not have much to offer, but I'll pray. Unity. I'm not going to go, you know, flattering uh, Brother Swerve because of a certain weakness. Because, you know, you are observing unity. Unity establishes people in God. It is an attraction of anointing. Hallelujah. And unity must be practiced. Sometimes we think being believers is all about appearing in church as people are born again and we are waiting for Jesus to come. I want to tell you, between the coming of Christ and where we are, there is too much work to do. There is too much habits to change. There is too much of character transformation that needs to happen. Because we must reflect the glory of God. And the glory of God will not come to people who are not prepared and ready for it to come. Because as much as God trusts His glory to come upon us, He also wants us to be carriers of that glory with all integrity. He wants us to become a reflection of Himself as the light of the world. Meaning, we must continue in the process of becoming all the time so that we can become more trusted by God. And the unity is one of the things that we must achieve if God will truly walk with us as a ministry, as believers, as a church, as a whole in Kenya and all over the world. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul was saying now, I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions, not those who cause offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. Avoid them. Because if they divide you, they remove you from the will of God. And he continues to say, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. They are not serving our Lord, that is verses 18, but their own appetites. The little people who serve Jesus will promote unity. If somebody is bringing division, they are serving their appetites. And it says that by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of the knife. Knife. The word knife means people who are not very informed. You, you, you lack information. You know? You are not very informed. Knife. Verse 19 says, Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. Hallelujah. You see, Paul is giving a praise report and he's telling this church of Romans that everybody has heard about your opinions. The people are so united. And Paul was trying now to say, God, the good thing that had been born in that church so that the devil does not find a way of scattering and destroying it. And probably, he might have sensed that there are divisions happening. That there are people who have entered and they are causing divisions. That's why you need to be very careful. Lest you develop a strange doctrine that is going to cause divisions here. You need to be very careful. There is so much content that we are consuming today through the internet, through the televisions. We've got all manner of preachers. You need it, you get it. All manner of doctrines everywhere. 
And some of you might be followers, they might be fans, some of you might be fans of certain funny doctrines, people who carry strange doctrines. And so they build you all the time. So by the time you are coming here in church, you are already divided. We preach here if you are sick, we are preaching the wrong thing. Because you came with a strange doctrine. I'm not saying that people should not listen to preachers online. But I'm just bringing a caution, like Paul is saying, be innocent about what is evil. Hallelujah. Be innocent about what is evil. People carry strange doctrines that divide the unity of the body of Christ. Actually, why all the churches cannot come together and pray the same way is what? Because there is division. There is no unity. Our doctrines do not agree with their doctrines. People are separated. Because, of course, there is no way I'm going to serve with somebody who says, there is no heaven when you die, everything ends here. Yet, I know there is heaven, and Jesus talked about it, and we have seen people who died and talk about heaven in the Bible and in our days. How can I agree with such a person? We cannot walk the same journey. Now imagine somebody coming to church carrying that doctrine. It means the person is going to feel divided. And there will be a conflict all of a sudden. If he or she begins to recruit others. And when the church is not united, we shall miss out great blessings that God would want to bring to us. Am I helping somebody? Mm -hmm. I know we love the preaching that talk about anointing, power, deliverance, Holy Ghost. But when we are not united, it will not happen. Actually, if, if, you, if you read uh, in the book of Acts about the coming of the Holy Ghost, during the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 and verses 1. The Bible says that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. That is unity. Praise the Lord. They were united. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. These were people who were united. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest of on each of them. And verses 4 says, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. All these things were happening in the atmosphere of unity. Praise the Lord. They were all happening in the atmosphere of unity. And you know sometimes you can be very disunited within yourself. If you are that person who feels as if you are scattered within yourself, you need help. Don't stay like that feeling as if you are not together. Like there's something that you don't want to believe. It is going to cause you to miss out on very important things of the kingdom. Don't allow the devil to divide you. Don't allow the devil to make you feel like you don't belong to the kingdom. If there are things that you do and they divide you, they, they, they cause offense in you. You feel like you are not connected with God, you are not united with, with Christ. Don't allow those things to be prolonged any longer. Bring them down. Hallelujah. If you read the book of Genesis 11, from verses 1 to 9, we learn about the Tower of Babel. The Bible says from verses 1, Genesis 11, let me read verses 1 
gone down. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shina and settled there. They said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Verse 4. They said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Now, what were these people fearing? They were fearly division. They didn't want to be divided. But one small mistake, there are other motives were not very right why they needed that. But all they needed was to safeguard and to protect the unity. So they wanted to separate themselves from other people. But the Lord came down to see the city. And the tower, the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be possible for them. Can you see the core of unity? These people are united. They have one language. And they are doing things together. And God himself is confessing and saying, because of this, nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Hey. Unity brings all possibilities. There is an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to go quickly, Go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Which one do you want? Quickly or far? Far. It's a tower of unity. So when God saw that these people cannot be prevented, He says that, Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. And you see now, God used the strategy of the vision to stop these people from building. <laughs> so, when the visions come, they stop progress, they stop growth, they stop development. The visions, even in a family, will stop a lot of things from happening. Hallelujah. We pray that Christ's intervention ministry will not be divided. He says that language is the core connector of these people. So if we change their language so that they don't understand each other, there will be no building. Now, if Kiprop speaks in his college in language to me and tells me, bring me cement, I will not understand. Maybe I will start taking this too. Or a chair. By the time I understand it in cement, it is evening. How much can we do in that kind of an environment? If my brother here speaks to me in his language, which language is that? Hebrew. If he speaks to me in his Hebrew language, <laughs> and tells me, Bring that rock. Like that divided on Google, Google Translator. How can you how much can you do with a Google Translator? What can you build? <laughs> Unity is important. Unity brings possibilities. So when God changed their language, now you see, there were many ways to stop those guys. God would have decided, let me just crush this thing. Hmm. But even if he crushed it, the unity would still remain. Therefore, they would still build again. You can't finish people who are united. 
I tell you. You cannot finish people who are united. A family that is united, you cannot finish them. They work together, they decide together, they make things happen. You can't finish a brother or a sister who has a united spirit with God who wants to achieve a dream where God becomes everything in the life of that person. So, God knew, let them have the skill, let them have the, the good health, let them see, let them hear well, let them do everything, but they will not understand each other. And with that, they will not build. The Bible says, so the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole world. So we build so that we don't scatter over the face of the earth. Now they are scattered. Unity is very important. Unity in the church. Unity as believers. Unity, of course, will always come if there is love, if there is forgiveness, if there is forbearance, if there is no carrying offense against each other, if there is no compromise, if people can have regular meetings, have a common goal and know that we have one common enemy called the devil, if there is no gossip, if we don't want evil for the other person, all these things end up to a united church. Hallelujah. Exodus 19, let me, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in the Fidi. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose out men and go out to fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the Lord of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hul went up to the top of the hill. Moses, Aaron, and Hul, they went up to the top of the hill. Verses 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there alone. And Aaron and Hul stayed up his hands, the one on the other side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were still there until the going down of the sun. Can you see now? At this time, Israel needed victory. But there's one challenge. The man who is standing as the commander of the army, just like any other normal human being, he is getting tired. The victory was based on how long the hands of Moses will remain lifted? Are we together? It was based on that. So, whenever Moses would get tired and the hands go down, what would happen? The enemies would prevail. But when he lifted up his hands, somehow, in a way that only God can explain, the Israelites would get strength and they would overcome the, the Ammonites. So the problem was the challenge. How do we maintain the hands of this man to remain up? That would not have been possible with Moses alone. And that is why there was Aaron and Hul. So what they did is they found stones and they put when they discovered that they, he needs his hands to remain up, so he needed some support. 
and they put the, the stones below the, the elbows and his hands were able to remain on top. And therefore, the children of God started conquering Amalek. What was causing this to happen is the unity that Moses had with Aaron and Hur. They were together, united, and they were also united with those uh, Israelites who are down the valley fighting. So that unity was flowing from their leader down to the army of Israel. They were coordinating and flowing up to God. It was coming from God to Moses flowing to the children of Israel who are now in the battlefield. Meaning, if there was no unity between Moses and God, even if he lifted the hands, nothing would have happened. If there was no unity between Moses and the children of Israel, even if he lifted his hands, he would not have become a blessing to them. If there was no unity between Moses and his inner circle, Aaron and Hul, they would not have helped him up. Now, when all these factors uh, functioned well. There was victory in the camp of Israel. When there is unity, there is victory. There is no battle that can bring down people who are united for a cause. Hallelujah. I urge you, as my brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us remain united for kingdom's sake. As individuals, as a church, as believers. Sometimes you may think you are the only one. But let me tell you, do it. Why we fail to achieve things is because we are waiting for other people to come and become our motivation. The times that we are living in, we might not find our motivation. Let the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and our God become our motivation. Purpose to remain in unity, to move in unity, to function from a point of unity, and you will see the blessings of God. I want us to bow our hands to God right now. I want you to think about the message that God has spoken to us this morning. We must have people who will influence unity in the ministry. We must have people who will influence unity in Kenya, in Africa, in the world today. May God help you to become one of the agents of unity in our time. I choose to be one of them. <coughs> May God help us. Oh God. We know that you are preparing to bless us. We know that you are preparing to manifest yourself in us. And this is not possible without unity. If you are here and you have been a victim of causing divisions, it's your time to repent. If you are catching me online and you are a victim of causing divisions, you need to repent. Sometimes even a pastor can cause divisions. Servants of God, my fellow preachers, don't cause divisions in the church. Leaders don't cause divisions in the body of Christ. We need to pray for unity. Unity of purpose, unity of faith. God expresses himself as a father, as a son, and as a Holy Spirit that we don't fight any conflict.
my father. 